Hello, and welcome to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast, your trusted source for reliable information on HIV and STD testing, with access to over 4,500 testing labs across the United States. If you'd like to learn more about confidential HIV or STD testing, check out the link in the description or the bio section. Now, here's a question for you. Could HIV actually be cured one day, not just controlled with daily treatment? In today's episode, we're diving into one of the most promising areas of HIV cure research, stem cell transplantation, the very method that led to the world's first documented HIV cures. We'll explain how scientists are using this advanced therapy with gene editing tools like CRISPR to engineer immune systems that are completely resistant to HIV infection. Could this be the path toward a real long-term cure? Stay tuned as we break down the science in simple terms and explore what it could mean for the future of HIV treatment and cure research. And make sure to watch until the end. We'll also share how you can take real steps today toward early detection and better health. Remember, early detection saves lives. For quick, affordable, and confidential HIV testing, visit HIVRNATestGuide.com today. You know, for decades, HIV has been one of the world's most daunting health challenges. It went from being a death sentence to, thankfully, a manageable condition. But what about an actual cure? Today, we're going to dive into the incredible scientific story of how we went from just treating HIV to actually curing it in a few people and what that means for everyone. And that's really the big question, isn't it? One that has driven researchers for 40 years. And the answer, incredibly, is yes, for a very small number of people. But understanding how they were cured, well, that's the key that has unlocked a whole new world of possibilities for millions. And to really get why a cure is so important, you have to understand the sheer scale of this. At the end of 2021, 38.4 million people were living with HIV across the globe. That's a staggering number, and it really highlights why just managing the virus isn't enough. We need to do better. So what is HIV actually doing in the body? Well, in short, it's a saboteur. It's really clever. It specifically goes after our CD4 plus T cells. You can think of them as the generals of our immune system's army. By taking out these key cells, it just slowly dismantles our body's ability to fight off anything, which, if you don't treat it, eventually leads to AIDS. And this gets us to the strange reality of modern HIV treatment. On one hand, it's a total medical miracle. Antiretroviral therapy, or ART, stops the virus from making copies of itself and lets people live long, healthy lives. But, and it's a huge but, it's not a cure. The virus is smart. It hides out in the body. That means you're looking at a lifetime of daily pills, dealing with potential side effects, and something called treatment fatigue. And that reality is exactly why the search for a permanent cure is so, so urgent. So you'd think the big breakthrough would come from some high-tech lab-designed drug, right? Well, nope. It actually came from a secret hidden right inside our own DNA. A kind of natural fluke that showed scientists a whole new way forward. This one question absolutely changed everything. It turns out a very, very small percentage of people, mostly with European ancestry, have this genetic quirk that makes them almost completely resistant to getting HIV. And figuring out why, well, that gave us the key. Okay, so it all comes down to this one thing, the CCR5 receptor. Just imagine your immune cells are like a really secure house. This CCR5 receptor, it's the doorknob on the front door. For HIV to get inside and start causing trouble, it has to grab onto and turn this specific doorknob. If it can't, it's literally locked out. And this is where that genetic quirk comes in. This mutation, CCR5 Delta 32, essentially just removes the doorknob. People who have two copies of this mutation, they just don't make a working CCR5 receptor. So for HIV, the front door to their immune cells is just gone. The virus simply can't get in. It's incredible. This discovery led to three absolutely landmark medical cases. First, back in 2009, we have the Berlin patient who proved a cure was even possible. Then a whole decade later, the London patient who showed it wasn't just a one-off fluke. And more recently, the New York patient who opened up a brand new and much more accessible path to a cure. So let's start with the pioneer, Timothy Ray Brown. The world got to know him as the Berlin patient. And his story, it's just one of incredible luck and brilliant science coming together. 
So, how in the world did it happen? Brown was fighting two different battles at once, HIV and leukemia. The leukemia was so bad he needed a really risky bone marrow transplant, which basically wipes out your entire immune system and replaces it. And his doctors had this amazing idea. What if, what if they could find a stem cell donor who also happened to have that super rare HIV-resistant CCR5 mutation? And they did. They found one. The transplant cured his cancer, and by giving him a brand new HIV-proof immune system, it cured his HIV too. For about 10 years, the Berlin patient was this amazing but solitary case. People wondered if it was just a miracle that could never be repeated. But then, new cases came along that proved the theory was solid and even better that we could improve on it. This is where the story gets really interesting. The Berlin and London patients both got traditional bone marrow transplants. The problem with that is, finding a donor who's a close genetic match and has that rare CCR5 mutation, I mean, it's like finding a needle in a global haystack. The New York patient's case was a total game changer, because they used umbilical cord blood instead. This is a huge deal, because cord blood doesn't need to be a perfect genetic match, and it's much more widely available. It just dramatically opens up the number of potential donors. And this is exactly why that new cord blood method is so important. There's a tough reality in HIV cure research. Women are vastly underrepresented in trials. Plus, that protective CCR5 mutation is most common in people of Northern European descent. Because the cord blood method is so much more flexible with matching, it makes this cure a potential reality for a much more diverse group of people. And that is a massive step forward for equity in medicine. But what if we didn't need a donor at all, right? What if we could just take a patient's own cells and engineer them to be resistant to HIV? This is where we go from a lucky discovery to intentional, powerful design. Enter CRISPR. You've probably heard of it. To put it simply, it's this revolutionary technology that lets scientists edit DNA with unbelievable precision. Think of it like a find and replace tool for biology. It can find a specific gene, like our old friend CCR5, and then use these tiny molecular scissors to just snip it out, disabling it. The theory here is just, it's so elegant and powerful. You would take a patient's own immune stem cells out of their body. Then, in a lab, you'd use CRISPR to edit out that CCR5 gene, basically giving them that protective mutation artificially. Then, you put those newly edited HIV-resistant cells back into their body. They would then build a whole new immune system from their own cells, but this time, it would be permanently resistant to HIV. No donor needed, no risk of rejection, just a potential cure for everyone. So, we've got these three incredible paths forward. One that's proven but really hard, one that's more accessible, and one that still feels a bit like science fiction. Let's put them all side by side and see where we really stand right now. So here's the breakdown. The bone marrow transplant. We know it works, but it's very high risk and that donor pool is tiny. The cord blood transplant is a huge leap forward, opening the door for so many more people. And then you have the ultimate goal, CRISPR gene editing, a potential universal cure that uses a patient's own cells. But for now, that's still experimental. And figuring out if it's safe in the long term is the next huge hurdle we have to clear. You know, the most important thing to take away from all this is that we've gone from a world where an HIV cure was pure science fiction to one where we have multiple proven strategies and a clear blueprint for a universal one. Now, for the moment, these are all complex, risky procedures, really only for patients who are also fighting cancer. But the scientific door has been kicked wide open. The question isn't if a universal cure is possible anymore. The question is, how do we make it safer? How do we refine it? And ultimately, how do we get it from being a cure for a few to being a cure for all?